Pokemon players. <laughs> Welcome back to Project Pocket Monster, the series where we go through and we balance Pokemon. Now, as of last episode, not maybe the episode before that, we hit halfway through Kanto, which is a really, really big deal. If you haven't been here before, and what this is, is we're going through and we're rebalancing old Pokemon who have fallen victim to something known as power creep. I've explained power creep a number of times, but it's basically when new utilities and abilities are introduced uh, over time that make old ones less relevant in the meta, which is something that you see all of the time in Pokemon. Just because that's just how it works. You know, new abilities that are better, new moves that are better, uh, stats that are better, etc, etc. Now, when we go through and we're balancing these Pokemon to bring them up to speed in the current metagame, there are a few assumptions that we have to make. If you guys know these assumptions, then you can skip right to this time and you can get on with the balancing. But if you don't know the assumptions and you're new to the series, you may want to listen to this because this directly affects how we approach all of these Pokemon. The assumptions are, uh, we're not changing the type chart or any sort of type matchups. Ice is still super effective against grass, water is still neutral against ice, fire is still super effective against steel, etc, etc. All of that is not being changed. The effects of abilities aren't being changed. We are working with what we got. So abilities like early bird and healer, uh, those are bad, but we're not going to be changing them or changing the effect of what they do. Uh, we're not changing the base power or PP, power points, <laughs> of any of these moves. Uh, so basically, you know, we're not going to give Roost 40 PP. Uh, we're not going to make Leer do 80 damage. You know, it's not going to be an 80 damage normal type move. We're not changing any of that. Again, we're working with what we got. Now, the most important part is that changes have to fit thematically. So, you look at the screen. You see Dugong. Now, for something like Dugong, we're not going to give Dugong Fire Blast. Why would a seal be able to launch a blast of fire from its mouth. It's an ice seal. Doesn't make any sense, so we're not going to do it. And last but not least, uh, these changes, again, they have to make sense based on the previously established lore and Pokedex entries. So a lot of the changes that we do make, uh, we do go through, we do our research, we look at all of the dex entries for each individual Pokemon, and we see, you know, stuff that's written down, that's canon in the lore, and that's how we draw inspiration for how we change these Pokemon. Uh, this is a meta, considering we're on Generation 8, but this is a meta without all of the cyclical things that Game Freak loves to include or not include in their games. Uh, stuff like Mega Evolution, uh, Z-Moves, uh, and Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. None of that is taken into account as we are going through and rebalancing Pokemon. For instance, Mega Mawile, totally fine. Mawile's fine with a Mega Evolution. However, Regular Mawile is not fine. Yes, I know that's Hoenn. I just got done balancing Hoenn. <laughs> we will get there. Keep in mind, guys, this is all for fun. You do not need to agree with anything that I've done. If you question the changes or you want to know why I made certain changes, be feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll try to get back to it. We can hash out what you think you would do to the Pokemon, etc. It's all for fun. Nothing set in stone. This is all just, you know, a grand old time. Now, Dugong. Oh my god, Dugong is a terrible, terrible Pokemon. <laughs> Look at those stats, dude. Nothing above 100. Uh, its best stat being 95. Dugong is without a doubt a Pokemon that has suffered immensely from power creep. It was never very good in its debut generation. Uh, having offenses of 70 and 70, not very good. It is supposed to be like a bulky support Pokemon, but it doesn't have access to like any of the tools that a support Pokemon like that has. Uh, it's weak to Volt Switch, it's weak to common fighting and rock type moves in the metagame. It's neutral to fire, except for thick fat, which is a good ability, but still. Uh, and 475, while it is a very respectable base stat total, uh, nothing screams out that's saying, hey, use me. Doesn't have reliable recovery. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of, you know, uh, abusing of the weather. Hydration, again, you can't really abuse the weather there. Uh, you could run like a rest set with in the rain, but that assumes that you're setting up rain, but you can't really do anything else besides like a really bad stall. Uh, and Dugong's not very good at it because a lot of things can break past Dugong. So, what do we do to balance this boy? There's a couple things. So when you look at its abilities, you see Thick Fat, you see Hydration, uh, you see Ice Body, but I think that Thick Fat is a perfectly fine ability. Uh, I think that being resistant to Ice-type moves a little bit more, which he's already four times resistant to Ice-type moves, so now he's, what, eight times resistant to Ice-type moves, which is crazy. 
uh, and fire type moves is kind of helpful for Dugong. It makes sense. It's a manatee. It's a Dugong. Haha. <laughs> Hydration. Uh, I like I previously mentioned that rest set in the rain. Uh, that is the thing that Dugong can do. Hydration sort of fits in my opinion. I think it's a pretty decent ability. But Ice Body, I don't think fits Dugong necessarily. Uh, it's not made of ice. Uh, it's just another ability that could potentially abuse the weather. But even then, Dugong doesn't have any reliable recovery outside of Rest and Aqua Ring, I believe. So the most notable thing we're going to do is we're going to change Ice Body for Fur Coat. Now, what Fur Coat does is it completely doubles the defense stat of Dugong. So now, from these rock slides, from these close combats, Dugong's taking them a whole bunch better than it ever was previously. Uh, this makes Dugong actually really, really fat of a physical wall. Uh, keep in mind that Water Ice type isn't exactly the best defensive type. Water's very good, but Ice is definitely a defensive liability. Having Fur Coat as this sort of backup uh, really, really helps Dugong a lot. Uh, a lot of Dugong's Pokedex entries reference the fact that it has this, this sleek Fur Coat. It helps him blend in. Uh, it, you know, things sort of slide and glide off of it. So I think it's cool to have a Pokemon... Uh, like Dugong with this ability. So, look at its stats. Uh, we gave it Fur Coat. I want to give it 20 points into its HP, meaning that it's 110, which is actually tied with Walrein, uh, the other Water Ice type who Dugong is sort of reminiscent of. Uh, I actually want to subtract 10 points from its defense because I think that 80 times 2 is a little ridiculous. 70 times 2 is definitely more manageable, especially with base 110 HP. I didn't want to make Dugong too bulky, especially considering some of the tools we're going to be giving it and some of the moves we're going to be giving it later. Uh, I want to give 15 points into its special attack stat. This means that Surf's hit a little bit harder, uh, Freeze Dry's hit a little bit harder. Yes, we're going to give Dugong Freeze Dry. Spoiler alert. Uh, and it definitely just helps Dugong out a little bit more. I've always seen Walrein as a more of a physical attacker, uh, but Dugong, I think, works as a special attacker. Having it have the ability to hit a little bit harder totally helps it. Uh, and I also want to subtract 15 points from Dugong's speed. Now, 70 was always very middling. It always wasn't very good. I'd rather have those base stat total points allocated to a stat that Dugong can actually utilize. Uh, Dugong's Pokedex entry says that it swims at 8 knots an hour, uh, which... Is only around nine miles an hour so dugong is actually not moving very fast no matter what uh base 55 speed is still relatively fast for a physically defensive wall uh, a lot of these walls they sit around base 30 35 even going into like you know 40 45 55 is still a decent speed tier for that type of pokemon uh, and I think that all of these stat changes actually go a long ways to help dugong a lot in what it's trying to do uh, despite its water ice typing being sort of a liability now as far as dugong's moves go I want to give it Ice Ball, which used to be the signature move of Wall Rain. Uh, now I don't believe it is anymore. Uh, I want to give it Freeze Dry, of course. It's a Water Ice type. It absolutely should have Freeze Dry. That just makes perfect sense to me. Uh, a lot of Ice types don't get Freeze Dry. I think that's sort of ridiculous. Ice is meant to be this sort of all-out offensive typing, uh, being able to hit a ton of things. And having it be such a defensive liability, it needs that extra boost to its offense. This lets Dugong beat a lot of bulky Water types it otherwise previously couldn't. Uh, Glaciate. Another ice type move I think that not enough Pokemon get. Uh, it's basically just Icy Wind. It's base 65 power, Icy Wind. It lowers Pokemon's speed stat, and it helps Dugong potentially outspeed them on a second turn. Uh, I want to give it Sparkling Aria, and I want to give it Flip Turn. Now, Flip Turn is really interesting as well, because now all of a sudden your defensive wall can pivot, and it can eat a hit, and it can do a slow flip turn out into something that's more suited to the current threat. Uh, coverage moves. I want to give Dugong Weather Bowl. Previously, he abused Rain and Hydration, and he abused Hail and Ice Body. I think it makes sense for it to have Weather Bowl. Uh, set up and support. Haze uh, makes sense. If something tries setting up in Dugong's face, Dugong just hazes it away. Uh, no problems there. You know, no Swords Dances where we're, we're coming from. No Dragon Dances. None of that. No Belly Drums. Stop that. Uh, Aurora Veil. Once again, a lot of ice types don't get Aurora Veil. I think that, especially considering Dugong can't set his own hail, I think that having access to Aurora Veil is not a problem at all. And it can't even abuse uh, hail in the sense that it doesn't have Ice Body anymore. So that's a whole nother thing. Uh, I want to get it Soak. And then I want to get it a bunch of support options. Now, Heal Bell, Dugong could be a Cleric. You could run a Toxic Heal Bell uh, slack off freeze dry set. You could run flip turn, heal bell, toxic, uh, you know, uh, surf set, something like that. Uh, it doesn't get scald. It is a water ice type. I don't think water ice types should get scald. Why would they shoot boiling hot water when they're used to, you know, 
icebergs and ice flows and whatnot, but it's okay. Um, Yawn. Yawn is a very underrated move as well. Uh, I look at Dugong, I think he's, you know, he's sort of a sleepy, lazy boy. Uh, and I think that Yawn actually helps it. It forces momentum for the team. Dugong's now no longer just going to sit there, eat hits, not being able to do anything. It can now force things out with either Haze, with Yawn, uh, with, you know, the previous stall tactics it has used. Uh, it's used, you know, Toxic, uh, Rest, sour sort of sets. Uh, I want to give Dugong Camouflage, too. Now, a lot of Dugong's Pokedex entries reference the fact that it's white fur actually helps it against a lot of predators. So I think the camouflage, while not necessarily, you know, uh, meta-breaking or meta-defining, I think it's a really interesting niche tool for Dugong to use. And finally, I want to give it Slack Off, which is probably the biggest addition we're going to give it besides Freeze Dry and besides Fur Coat. Slack Off, all it does is give Dugong reliable recovery. It's still taking a ton of damage from uh, special hits. It's most notably like special electric type hits, special grass type hits. Uh, but Slack Off lets it heal that damage off, lets it continue to Toxic Stall something, uh, potentially even stay alive longer. It could do a Yawn, it could Heal Bell, uh, it could continue to support its team throughout the battle, which is really, really something that a Pokemon like Dugong needs. That brings us into our boy Muck. Now, Muck's a very, very cool Generation 1 Poison type, in essence of Weezing, in essence of Vile Plume. Uh, different poison types. Generation 1 was really, really big on the poison types. Arbok, even. Uh, but the thing is with Muck is that it is underwhelming. You look at its stats, you see 105, 105, uh, and 100 special defense. Everything else is just moderately okay. Uh, and base 500 is actually really good. But the problem with Muck is that it's outclassed by a number of future poison types, as well as very outclassed by its Alolan form. And we'll get to its Alolan form in a little bit, but for now... I think that Muck only needs a couple of real tweaks in order to make it actually sort of viable as an Assault Vest user, as sort of a the defensive pivot that its counterpart in Alolan Muck is. So, first things first, we're not really going to change Muck's stats all too much. Uh, sometimes I want to separate the Alolan form and the regular form of the Pokemon a lot. Uh, in this case, I don't want to separate them a lot, but I do want to have a tiny bit of difference. So I actually want to take 10 points out of Muck's special attack and put it directly into Muck's defense. This lets it take physical hits a little bit better, uh, and it actually patches up its physical bulk decently well. Uh, now the biggest changes are its abilities. Uh, Stench, while thematic, is very useless. Uh, Sticky Hold, it sort of has a use. You could potentially prevent your item from being knocked off, but most of the time it's not going to come in handy. Uh, Poison Touch is a fantastic ability, and we're going to let that stay. Now, I want to get rid of Stench for Liquid Ooze, and this is the big one. I want to get rid of Sticky Hold for Regenerator. Uh, I think that Regenerator makes so much sense for Muck. Uh, it's literally just a toxic pile of sludge. Pollution is constantly cropping up in our world. Uh, <laughs> rise up, climate change activists, rise up. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, Regenerator uh, helps Muck out a lot. It lets it, as an AV user, it lets it come in, potentially do some damage, uh, check a certain number of uh, special attacking threats, uh, and then be able to switch out, get its health back that it lost, and maintain its livelihood throughout the entire game. Uh, this means that even if Muck gets burned or something, uh, it doesn't have as much of a physical presence as it used to, uh, it means that it can still get its health back, come back in, potentially get healed by a cleric or something, maybe Dugong, uh, you know, etc, etc. Uh, as far as Muck's moves go, uh, I want to give it Foul Play, and I want to give it First Impression as coverage moves. Uh, and as Setup and Support, I want to give it Corrosive Gas, I want to give it Toxic Spikes, and I want to give it Baneful Bunker. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why First Impression? Uh, the first thing that you smell when a muck enters the field is its first impression. Now, uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, muck's known as one of the stinkiest Pokemon of all time, and I think that having that sort of priority is actually a pretty big deal for it. It lets it check a lot of psychic type threats, as well as dark type threats, even, even grass type threats. It wouldn't have a problem with them anyway, but first impression makes muck really unique. Uh, foul play, again, uh, muck is foul smelling. This prevents uh, Pokemon from setting up uh, on Muck too much. Uh, if they're trying to set up a Swords Dance, if they're trying to set up a Dragon Dance, Muck can just foul play them, do potentially a lot of damage, uh, move on. Corrosive Gas is a move that uh, Generation 8 introduced. It basically just gets rid of the opposing 
Pokemon's held item. Muck already gets knockoff, but I think it makes sense for it to get corrosive gas. Toxic Spikes is something that I think a lot of poison types should get that don't. Uh, I think that having a hazard pretty much exclusive to poison types and a few select other types is really important. So you wouldn't be able to run a Toxic Spike set uh, with the Assault Vest, with Corrosive Gas, with Baneful Bunker. So Muck already has this four move slot syndrome. You wouldn't be able to run everything you would want to run. You would want to run Knockoff, uh, First Impression, Toxic Spikes, and then potentially, you know, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, some sort of coverage move. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do that with all with an Assault Vest. So with Baneful Bunker, Muck can run a Black Sludge set, it cannot run an Assault Vest set, and it's able to poison the opposing Pokemon on the opponent's side of the field. Uh, Muck doesn't have any sort of reliable recovery, still outside of Rest or something like that, uh, and being able to sort of stall turns with Poison, Black Sludge, uh, really helps it a lot as a defensive pivot. With Regenerator as well, it also has this sort of uh, defensive quality to it, and it actually makes Muck quite good in comparison to its Alola form. Now Alolan Muck is already very good. Uh, right now it's UU, it's probably even used in OU a lot. It's a crazy good uh, defensive pivot. Being able to poison touch things, poison dark is such good typing. Uh, Assault Vester, uh, gets Shadow Sneak. Now I don't actually want to touch Alolan Muck all too much, so I'm going to breeze through this very quickly, but I think that it deserves to have some of the tools that we gave regular Muck. Now, we're not going to change its stats at all. Uh, its stats are totally fine. The only thing differing regular Muck from Alolan Muck are the 10 points we put into regular Muck's defense uh, as, as compared to its special attack. Uh, we're going to leave Alolan Muck's special attack and defense the exact same, uh, and we're not going to touch any of its abilities. Power of Alchemy is really unique. Gluttony is totally fine for it, but you're pretty much all of the time going to be running Poison Touch. Uh, as far as its moves go as well, uh, I want to give it foul play in the same essence we gave uh, regular Muck. Uh, if a Pokemon tries to set up in Alolan Muck's face, Alolan Muck can foul play and it can do a butt ton of damage. I mean, 105 base attack is nothing to sneeze at. And I also want to give it a couple of support options in case it decides to run a Black Sludge set or a 33% Berry set, Corrosive Gas, Toxic Spikes, and Baneful Bunker. Uh, these tools let a low and muck do what it does even a little bit better. It's able to poison more things. It can come in and out even with uh, even with an assault vest. It already poisons a lot of stuff with poison touch, shadow sneak, uh, poison touch, uh, you know, poison jab, fire punch, etc., etc. Uh, so a low and muck was already very good, but I felt the need to give a low and muck the same type of treatment we gave regular muck. Uh, not going as far as to give it regenerator because I think that would be just a low and muck with regenerator. No, 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 no. Uh, but the thing we're not going to give Alolan Muck is First Impression. You might be thinking, why would we not give it First Impression? Why would he only give that to regular Muck? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because Alolan Muck doesn't stink. In its lore, it says that it does not actually reek like regular Muck does. Uh, so, we're not going to give it First Impression, because what sort of impression is a clean scent leaving? Not one that does any damage, that's for sure. Hey you guys, if you made it this far, we're at the halfway point of the video. I know, super cool, right? Uh, this is my channel. If you like what I'm doing, you like what you see, uh, different kinds of content, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Really helps me out a lot. I am a one-man show, so I do all the editing, I do all the recording, etc, etc. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. Back to the video. Which brings us in to Cloyster. Now, we're not going to be touching Cloyster. I'll tell you exactly why. Uh, as of Generation 8, Base 70 speed, heavy duty booties, uh, skill link, shell armor, overcoat, all fantastic abilities. It is another water ice type, but it does things totally different than a dugong or a wall rain. Cloyster is known as a shell smash sweeper. I mean, look at that defense stat. 180 is absolutely unbelievable. It's a stat monster. All Cloyster needs to do is just live a defensive hit. Uh, come in on a Pokemon that can only hit it physically, it shell smashes, now all of a sudden it's really fast, and it can hit you with Rock Blast, it can hit you with uh, Icicle Spear, uh, even like Spike Cannon if it really wanted to, it's not gonna, but it could do that if it wants to. Uh, it gets Rapid Spin as well, it has Hazard Removal. So Cloyster not only gets this Shell Smash set, this Rapid Spin set, Cloyster also gets Spikes, it gets Toxic Spikes, and it also gets Explosion. And coming off a of base 95 attack, boosted, uh, that's absolutely insane. Cloyster is totally fine as it is. While it has a lackluster special defense stat, I don't think it needs any sort of help. It is meant to be this sort of, uh, 
The Quister's a crazy Pokemon. This thing's just absolutely nuts. I don't want to touch it. Uh, it is only RU, but I think that's due to a couple weaknesses. It's very uh, weak to certain types of priority, like Vacuum Wave, but that's totally fine for a Pokemon like Cloyster. Speaking of Pokemon we're not going to touch, uh, Gengar. <laughs> now, Gengar is already very good. Uh, 110 speed tier, 130 special attack. Uh, it did get nerfed in Sun and Moon by getting rid of Levitate for Cursed Body, uh, but that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, it does hurt it even a little bit, uh, but most of the time you're going to be able to one-hit KO something with Gengar anyway. Uh, Life Orb sets, uh, Choice Spec sets, Choice Scarf sets, you run a Sash, uh, you know, it gets crazy coverage, it Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, uh, Sludge Bomb, it's even better against Fairies in the new XY Sun and Moon meta game. Uh, 110 speeds, nothing to scoff at. Even 75 special defense is actually, like, not that bad. Gengar can usually take a special hit, depending on how it's invested. Uh, and Generation 8, Gengar actually also gets Nasty Plot. So, for an unprepared team, if you come in, there's no hazards, your sash is intact, you either set up a substitute, you could set up a Nasty Plot, and you're doing crazy damage to almost anything that comes in. Uh, Ghost is only resisted by Dark, which I found out. Well, not that I found out, but that I am noting right now because ghost is an insanely good offensive typing uh and i think that gengar overall does not need to be touched it's very good it's always been very good and it doesn't need any help frankly it just it just doesn't it's, it's already it's already solid which brings us to hypno now it's funny because on the day i recorded this a false swipe gaming actually came out with their video how good was hypno actually and after watching that video i think hypno definitely needs buffs in generation 8 now you look at Hypno's stats, uh, 85 HP, only 73 in each of its attacking stats, 115 special defense is the only thing that stands out to you, and a really bad speed tier in 67. Pure Psychic type, we see a lot of those. Uh, I don't think that that necessarily encompasses everything that Hypno is. So I'm opting because Hypno is known for potentially taking away children, uh, that sort of thing. I want to give Hypno a Psychic Dark typing. Uh, this lets it potentially uh, face down other psychic types. Uh, it lets it take hits from ghost types a little bit better. While it does, uh, you know, now it's neutral to fighting types, as well as taking four times damage from U-turn. I think that's absolutely a fine trade-off for a better offensive typing, as well as making Hypno a little bit more unique. Uh, as far as its stats go, I want to give 10 to each of its attack and special attack. I think that 85, 70, 115 bulk is actually not that bad. You could run Hypno as an Assault Fest, but we're going to do a few things to Hypno's abilities to make you potentially do something a little bit different with it. Now, 83 and 83 uh, attack and special attack isn't crazy, but it does help it out a decent amount. Hypno is definitely one of those Pokemon that get hit with Generation 1 Syndrome, uh, lackluster stats, Generation 2's special split actually didn't help it a lot. It went from 115 special attack to 73, uh, which is actually sort of embarrassing uh, for a psychic type that's fully evolved. Uh, now, it's supposed to be a defensive beast, but as power creep happened, uh, you know, obviously things started hitting harder. Choice specs, life orb, Hypno now can't take a hit. Uh, Insomnia, Forewarn, and Inner Focus. Insomnia makes sense to me. Forewarn and Inner Focus, though, I think that they can go. Now, I'm opting to give Hypno No Guard instead of Forewarn and Bad Dreams instead of Inner Focus. Now, Bad Dreams, it was the signature ability of Darkrai, but I think that Hypno is a Pokemon that's based on Dreams. It's based on putting Pokemon to sleep. I think that Bad Dreams actually is really, really cool for it. Uh, so I think that, you know, being able to run potentially a Substitute, Hypnosis, Bad Dreams, and a Toxic set or something crazy like that uh, maybe even like Seismic Toss, because I know it gets access to Seismic Toss. Uh, that would be really neat. Being able to sort of be a stall Pokemon like that, would be, I think would be really cool. Uh, and No Guard. Now, you're thinking, why No Guard? What, why would you run a No Guard Hypno? I'll tell you exactly why. Uh, this makes Hypno the only Psychic type with No Guard, but it also makes Hypno able to land 100% accurate Hypnosises. I think that this is super thematic for Hypno 1. And also really, really interesting. Uh, this lets Hypno potentially hypnosis something. It could set up screens. It could start boosting with Calm Mind. It could wish. 
Uh, we are going to give it knockoff. It can knock off whatever it has. It, it generates a little bit of momentum for the team. A Hypno is already defensive, so if it does happen to take a hit, especially on the special defensive side, from something like a Focus Blast or a Hydro Pump or a Fire Blast, uh, no guards downside actually doesn't mean a whole lot to it. Uh, and I think that having 100% accurate sleep is really, really cool. It's just like a spore. Uh, with a co working combination of its access to Hypnosis and its ability in No Guard uh, means Hypno is very interesting of a Pokemon. Now, as a Psychic Dark type, it is four times weak to U-Turn. Uh, it doesn't have any way to boost its speed, but we are going to give it a couple of moves I think it sorely deserves. Now, for its stab moves, I want to give it Stored Power and Expanding Force. Stored Power you can capitalize off of Calm Mind boosts, you can capitalize off of Belly Drum if you really, really want to. Expanding Force makes sense. It's a Generation 8 move. A lot of Psychic types get it. Uh, I want to give Hypno Knockoff. I want to give it Fling, uh, Punishment, Dark Pulse, Night Days, False Surrender, and Power Trip. Uh, all of these are just Dark type coverage moves. You find that a lot of Dark types don't have access to a lot of these different interesting kind of moves. I think Night Days makes sense for it. Power Trip, again, in the same sense of Stored Power. Uh, you can boot off a Calm Mind boost. Uh, you could run even boosting with Barrier or something like that. Uh, as far as coverage moves, I think that Hypno is known for absorbing the dreams and feasting on the dreams of its uh, opponent. And I think that Leech Life actually makes a lot of sense for it. It doesn't necessarily help its coverage out a lot since it can already hit Dark types and Grass types pretty much just fine. Uh, but I think that it helps it, it gives it another option to run instead of Drain Punch. Uh, setup and support, I want to give Hypno Amnesia. I want to give it Gravity. I want to give it Psycho Shift. Uh, taunt. Slack off and Destiny Bond. Amnesia again lets Hypno potentially set up. Uh, Gravity is just a psychic type move I think that a lot more psychic types should get. Let's moves actually 100% hit. So if you don't want to run No Guard, you want to run Bad Dreams, you can run Gravity instead and then Hypnosis and then it automatically goes to sleep and Bad Dreams is kicking in. And that's another thing, you can't run No Guard and Bad Dreams at the same time. Obviously it's two different abilities. Uh, taunt, you're able to Taunt your opponent into using a move. I think that as a dark type, it makes sense for it to get. Slack off lets Hypno stick around throughout the match. I think the distribution of slack off is pretty uh, pretty bad, all things considered. You saw we give it to Dugong. Uh, we do give it to a few more Pokemon down the line. And Destiny Bond. Uh, once Hypno is said and done and done its thing, I think it should be able to take an opposing Pokemon with it just like it took that little child into the forest that one time in its Pokedex entry. Hypno's scary. If you have not listened to Hypno's Lullaby, don't do it, but you maybe you should go look it up. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. I don't know. I've never liked Hypno. Uh, all of these tools make Hypno super unique. 100% uh, accurate sleep, uh, ability to set up belly drums, being a physical psychic type attacker is really, really neat. Uh, belly drum with a dark type and a psychic type, something we haven't seen before. Uh, able to boost and capitalize off those boosts with stored power, power trip, uh, access to leash life, uh, drain punch. It already has access to wish as well, so you could run hypnosis wish if you wanted to. This just gives Hypno so many options. Uh, all of these things just packed into one make Hypno a much better support Pokemon, as well as a potentially deadly sweeper if a lot of the opposing team's threats are out of the way. I think this makes Hypno super interesting, super unique, and sort of viable. Not necessarily entirely viable, but it makes him caught up to speed with Generation 8 Power Creep, which is all we're trying to do. And last but not least, Kingler. Yes, 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 Kingler. Oh, I'm so excited, dude. I'm so excited. Now, Kingler, it's been a double dancer. Agility and Swords Dance. And then it tries to sweep a team from there. However, Kingler is very frail. Uh, 55 base HP, uh, 115 defense is pretty good, but 50 base special defense means that Kingler is most of the time it's outsped and it's just destroyed by pretty much any special move. Uh, Sheer Force is a very good ability, Hypercutter is a very good ability, and Shell Armor is a pretty decent ability. Uh, I think that Kingler only needs a couple of things to make it absolutely insane. Kingler, it's a setup Pokemon, 130 base attack with Sheer Force and a Life Orb is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. It gets access to a number of different moves, Crab Hammer, uh, Knock Off. Being a solo water type is absolutely fine for it in my opinion, but I think that Kingler needs a little bit of help because it's fallen by the wayside in favor of other water type sweepers. Uh, you know, things like Crawdaunts, even Swift Swim users like Omastar, Kabutops, uh, Caracosta, those all sort of outclass Kingler in their own right. 
So as far as things we're gonna do for King Lear, we're only gonna touch its stats a little bit. Now we're gonna give 17 points to its HP. This lets it potentially take a hit a lot better. This also boosts its regular defensive profile a lot better as well. Uh, 72, 115 is much better than 55, 115. Uh, I wanna boost its attack stat by nine, not quite hitting 140, not quite, but it is now very attractive looking at it. Uh, and it may cause people to pick Kingler over a lot of other water types with similar stats. Uh, and I want, and this is the biggest thing, I wanna give nine points into its speed stat. Uh, 84 means it's getting outsped by base 85 Pokemon, but this also means it's outspeeding base 80 Pokemon, as well as definitely outspeeding base 75 Pokemon with max investment. All of this brings Kingler up to a stat total of 510, which I think is absolutely fair for this two-stage water type. Water types usually have a pretty uh, decent base stat total anyway, and I think that leaving Kingler's weaknesses as they are, being no special attack, no special defense, uh, this doesn't actually break Kingler too much. Now, we're actually not going to give Kingler very many moves, but the moves we do give Kingler are absolutely horrifying, and are, you better be ready for it. You better be ready for it. So, moves we want to give Kingler. As far as same type attack bonus, all I want to give Kingler is Flip Turn. Flip Turn means Kingler could even run a Choice Scarf set. With its new base 84 speed, Kingler could be a little bit faster. Uh, it can scout things a... You know, 139 attack flip turn is going to hurt pretty much anything that can't absorb it or uh, a grass type or really defensive, another water type even. Uh, coverage. Now, this is a generation 8 move. It is the signature move of Galarian Stunfisk. It is Snap Trap. It is basically Whirlpool or Fire Spin, but a physical move for grass types. And I think that this absolutely makes sense. Kingler's Claw is said to be so powerful and so strong this actually helps Kingler out so much against other bulky water types. Being able to stay in and snap trap things a couple of times, something like a, like a Vaporeon or a Seismitoad or even like a Swampert or something, really, really helps Kingler. Just this, and it's only base 35 uh, attack, so it's actually not going to do crazy damage, but it will be able to do enough, especially to these water ground bulky water types. And set up and support, this is the biggest thing. We just got done talking about how scary Cloyster is. Uh, Cloyster's scary for a little bit different reasons, but I want to give Kingler Shell Smash. Yes, it is a crab. Yes, you break that crab open. What's inside? Absolute deliciousness. Uh, base 84 speed boosted by times two. Absolutely insane. Uh, 139 attack with a Shell Smash boost is unreal as well. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of access to priority. Uh, and it can be outsped by a lot of choice scarfers who can come in, they can thunderbolt it, uh, you could sucker punch it, it would do a lot of damage as well. Uh, but this makes Kingler a very niche uh, water type shell smash user. It makes him faster than Feraligator, faster than uh, Gyarados, and actually sort of puts Kingler on the map as far as these water types go. I find that when I balance water types, I want to differentiate them a lot from other water types, because a lot of water types just do the same thing. Uh, with access to Snap Trap, access to Flip Turn, as well as access to Sheer Force, this means that Kingler is actually uh, really, really good. Being able to set up a Shell Smash on a um, physically attacking Pokemon, being able to use that 115 defense, uh, Kingler can tear through teams late game, and I think that's what Kingler's always been meant to do. Being able to boost its speed while being able to boost its attack is something that Kingler sorely lacked, and I think that with Shell Smash actually really, really helps it. And keep in mind, you can't run a White Herb Shell Smash. Well, you can run White Herb Shell Smash with Kingler, uh, but you can't also run Sheer Force, Life Orb, etc., etc. Uh, so those boosts can't stack on each other. It is still absolute crazy power, but it's not like ridiculous levels of power. And that all being said, that is where we're going to end the video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I do these every single Tuesday. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Furco Dugong. Let me know your thoughts on Regenerator Muck. Your thoughts on Bad Dreams and No Guard Hypno, as well as this Shell Smashing Kingler. Uh, remember, I do all of these for fun. Uh, if you guys have any sort of suggestions for what you would do to these Pokemon, leave a comment. I love talking about it. I love generating buzz about these different Pokemon. I love hearing ideas and being able to potentially implement them into this whole project. That's what it's all about. It's all about everybody just talking about, you know, what they would do to the Pokemon and that sort of thing. 
Uh, I'm gonna get on out of here. Again, thank you all for watching. All the support recently has meant so much to me. Uh, we finally hit over 300 subscribers, which is really, really cool. And more stuff to come, Radical Red, uh, Pikmin content. I'd like to start doing Zelda content, etc., etc. If you guys come for the balancing, again, next Tuesday. I'm gonna get on out of here. Thank you all for watching. Till next time.